Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodcraft. This is in response to one of my young viewers named Eric. Eric is a Canadian and he would like to come to America and walk the Appalachian Trail. And one of the things that he wants to try to do is to practice primitive skills to see how much he can do on his own en route. So that's what this is about. So Eric, it can be done, but you must have a very woods resources mindset, what Dave Canterbury calls a possum mindset of when you see it, gather it. It can be done. So I'm going to show you two right now that's super abundant here in the south and throughout the eastern woodlands of the United States. And I hope it gives you an idea of a starting point. So, let us begin. Okay guys, what you're looking at right here is a pine tree stump. Now I'm sure this was weather killed probably several years ago and the outside of the stump is very weathered. However, you notice that telltale spiky bit sticking up? That's a surefire way to spot a fat lighter stump because it does not rot decompose. Now this is typically a pine tree that has been killed at the height of sap and the sap has congealed and percolated and fermented for lack of a better term inside the stump and thus you get fat lighter. Now this is good old Alabama gold right here. Look how bright, you see those bright colors in there. Nice striations as the sapwood was still full of resin when it died. Now like I said that tree probably went down 10 years ago and here this is just as viable as it was the day it fell. And when you smell it, it's like it's soaked in gasoline. Okay, now, I've got in the lee of this log so I don't have any wind right in here. And I found me two large, broad leaves. I'm going to sit them down. And then I'm going to put this block that I already just happen to have down and take this stick I split off and put onto it just like that. I'm going to take the back of my knife, which has a good 90 degree edge, and now I'm going to just start shaving. Nice and easy, fine little shavings. I'm going to do this until I get a pretty good pile built up on the leaves. No rush, just do it nice and easy. Now you can start over at any time, so if you get a little, you know, off balance or whatever, I just push it, stop, gently pick up, break off, and then gather up what I've got into a pile. I then put the board back down, put down my scraping stick, and start again. A lot of people get in a hurry and frustrated with this because they go to generate this sawdust and it flies off or it gets blowed away and they're not putting a proper catch down in order to capture it. So what I'm doing is keeping my thumb on the side of the blade and using that 90 degree spine of my knife to create thin little shavings. Just like that. Now, I've got a pretty good sized pile of shavings right there. Just like that. But, when you're talking about shavings and ignition, if you're not in any you know, urgent need, make more. More is always better because it guarantees your ignition. Once it goes, I want it to go and have plenty of fuel. So, that's the problem a lot of people make with char, char cloth, and several other of these primitive methods. As they try to go too small, they're afraid of wasting it or something like that. Use a big piece. Make enough that when it does go, it's going to have plenty of fuel. Don't be afraid to make a pile the size of a marshmallow. See, now that's a good sized pile right there. That should do what I'm wanting to do. <clears throat> now, I can ignite this with a ferrocium rod. I can ignite this with flint and steel. I can put this right beside a bow drill set so when that ember catches I can have it right close to get that ignition. There's a lot of uses for that. 
but I'm going to try to ignite it with my burning lens. I picked up this burning lens at the Pathfinder gathering two years ago when I went up to it and have used it several times. It's a resource that doesn't cost you anything. The sun is free and we have plenty of sun in South Alabama. So with this and some sort of burnable material, I've got a method to start a fire. Okay, here's the next source. This is a backlog from a big fire. As you can see, it's charred already, just like I would do in my char tin. But rather than me having to do this in my char tin, it's already done the work for me. So as I go along and I see this, I'll take the opportunity to fill up my char tin. Just, just simply a screw top lid that pellets and ammunition for an air rifle comes in. I've got a few pieces of charcoal and then some char. What I'm going to do is crack off several of these better pieces of char into the tin. Just like that. Until I fill the tin up with good, black, dry char. If it's a little bulky, don't worry. You can crush it down. It's like styrofoam. Don't weigh nothing. Push it down, seal up the tin. Now we're ready for the next. I've already step. got my existing fire kit. And of course, I've got my ferrocium rod and I've got my tinder set in there. So we're going to use the tinder out of here. So I'm not going to blow this up much, just get a flame out of it. I'll take a little bit of this shredded birch bark. To use as a nest. Next, I'll gather up some of this dry grass from this park was freshly mowed here a few days ago. I'm in a state park, by the way, so I'll make me up a quick, and then right in the middle, I put my bone dry cedar shavings. Okay, now, i got to hurry because I'm going to lose my son if I'm not careful. I'm going to take and take those shavings and put them right there in the middle of that, just like that. I'm going to take my burning lens out. I'm going to open up my char tin. I'm going to take out a piece of that char I just harvested up the hill. Say like that, put right there in the middle. Let's see if we can get that to blow to a coal. Now, my technique okay, my technique is to focus on a target and then move my bird set into that zone instead of trying to focus on it. So getting out here, I'm going to bring it in until I get the smoke. Let's see if I can get it to go. Okay, had to readjust. Lost my son. There we go. And fire. There we go. Okay, Eric, that is the basic idea. You have to practice, practice, practice. Now, you saw how it gave me a little bit of difficulty. I know what I'm doing, and still, 
I was having the sun outrun me because of tall trees and the sun drifting through these pines. And it looks like it's bare sunlight, but it's not quite. You need to have in true bare sunlight. But with just a resource that I can pick up all along the Appalachian Trail, a fat lighter, that I can then turn into shavings, easy to light components, etc. With a magnifying glass, I expel no resources. With a char tin, and I gather char as I go, or salvage from my fire, the last thing I do in the morning before I take off is refill my char tin with fresh char. I will have a renewable resource that as I go along, I can stop and build a fire. But, never, ever use primitive methods exclusively. Always carry a lighter. Always carry matches. Always carry a ferrocerium rod. Because two of those produce flame. One of those produces thousands of lights. And a magnifying glass has unlimited lighting potential so long as you protect it and take care of it. That and readily gathered natural material will allow me to create a fire. But it will be difficult. It will be challenging. If that's what you're looking for a challenge, I salute you. It would be a challenge to go the entire Appalachian Trail without any modern type of fire lighting because you're going to face conditions that it's raining. There's no sun. Building a primitive bow drill set is not practical. Carrying one with you possible, but the weather conditions mean it's have a very low success rate. Having the ability to create flame is a real asset, especially when it is cold, blowing rain, it is just miserable, and you're trying to get this little bitty pile dry enough to ignite. So, I hope this helps you guys. Please leave any questions or comments, and if there's anything else that you would like me to go further into, please send me another email. I'll be glad to respond to it. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.